Gusto mo bang matutong ayusin ang iyong buhay pinansyal? Matutong mag-invest sa tamang paraan? O kaya naman makaiwas sa utang? Welcome to Wealth Educator Circle Channel, a community where we can learn, invest, travel, and earn. This is Nolz and I will be your coach in this class. Today, pag-uusapan natin ng steps na kailangan natin pagdaanan para ma-achieve natin ang financial security. Ano nga ba ang six steps to financial security? To give you an overview or summary, here are the following steps na pag-uusapan natin today. Number one, increasing cash flow. Number two, managing debt. Number three, creating emergency fund. Number four, proper protection. Number five, build long-term savings. And lastly, number six is preservation of estate. Una, pag-usapan muna natin ang increasing cash flow. What does your financial story look like? Or the direction it is taking? Option one, you have a big dream, but you have a small income. Would you shrink your dream to fit the size of your income? Or option two, you have a big dream, still you have a small income. Instead of shrinking your dream, you have to increase the size of your income to fit the size of your dream. As the quote says, in life, you have a choice, but if you cannot fund your choice, then you have no choice. So every day, we all have 24 hours. The question is, how do we spend our time? Did you know that the best time to build your wealth is your spare time? Sabi nga, poverty is not lack of money, it's mismanaged time and money. So now we move into managing debt. So paano nga ba nagkakaroon ng debt or utang? Meron tayong present income at present needs. At syempre, meron din naman tayong future income at future needs. Yung present income, ginagamit natin syempre sa present needs. Kaya lang nagkakaroon ng debt ang isang tao kung yung future income niya ay ginagamit niya para sa present needs mamamanage lang natin ng maayos ang debt natin or maiiwasan kung ang future income natin ay gagamitin para sa future needs. Mas maganda pa nga kung sobra-sobra pa yung present income at nagagamit pa natin ito para sa future needs. It's either you manage your debt or your debt will manage you. Ngayon, pag-uusapan naman natin ang next step which is creating emergency fund. Sinabi ko sa previous video na para makakreate ka ng emergency fund is dapat mag-set aside ka ng at least 3 to 6 months of your income. Sa iba, 3 to 6 months of your monthly expenses. The ideal amount would be 3 months pag single ka at 6 months kung ikaw naman ay married or may pamilya na. Ngayon naman, ang next step would be ensuring proper protection. Gaano ba kalaking protection o life insurance ang kailangan meron tayo? Ang formula para dyan is annual income times 10. Example, ang salary mo ay 20,000 pesos per month. Times 12 is 240,000 pesos. Ibig sabihin, yung 240,000 pesos, yan ang annual income mo. Following the rule, 240,000 pesos, which is yung annual income mo, times 10 is 2.4 million pesos. Ibig sabihin, kung ikaw ay kumikita ng 20,000 per month, dapat ang face amount ng insurance na kinukuha mo should be 2.4 million pesos. Ano nga ba mag-build ng long-term savings? Baka pag-build tayo ng long-term savings, Isisimula natin sa pag-change ng lifestyle natin. In short, living below our means. Example, sa isang corporation, may tatlo na magre-retire. Si Maria, si Pedro, at si Juan. Dahil sa posisyon nila, si Maria at si Pedro ay binigyan ng tig-1 million retirement pay. Habang si Juan naman ay 200,000 lamang. 
Si Maria ay may monthly expense na 200,000 pesos per month. Si Pedro naman, 100,000. At si Juan naman ay 10,000 pesos lang. Sino sa tingin nyo yung mas kayang mamuhay ng mas matagal gamit ang retirement money? Si Maria abot ng 5 months. Si Pedro naman, mga 10 months. Si Juan, yung pinakamababang nakuha sa kanila, ay abot ng 20 months. Sabi nga, a wealthy man is not the one who has the most money, but is the one who lives the cheapest. Ayan, balikan natin ang rule of 72. Tulad ng diniscuss natin sa previous video, reviewin natin. Sabi sa concept na ito, 72 divided by the interest rate will give you the number of years your money will, do will double. Para mas maintindihan natin ang concept, here's an example. A bank gives you 1% interest. Applying the rule of 72, 72 divided by 1 is 72 years. Ibig sabihin, aabutin ka ng 72 years para magdoble yung pera mo pag nilagay mo sa isang facility na nagbibigay sa iyo ng interest rate ng 1% per year. Kung 20 years old ka at may 10,000 pesos ka, gustong palakihin, nilagay mo sa 1% interest per year. Ibig sabihin, after 72 years, pagdating mo ng 92 years old, sa kadodoble ang pera mo to 20,000 pesos. E noons, paano ko makakaipon kung konti lang ang natitira sa iniipon ko? Ang tanong, magkano ba ang ginagastos natin everyday? Alam mo ba na sa konting natatabi mo, eh, pwede ka nang makaipon ng madami. Example na lang, kung ikaw ay isang coffee lover, lahi kang buhay bili ng mamahaling kape araw-araw at gumagastos ka ng 165 pesos per cup at nagkakape ka ng 5 cups of coffee per week. Per month, gumagastos ka ng 3,300 pesos. At per year naman, di mo napapansin, gumagastos ka ng 39,600. In 10 years, gumastos ka na sa kape lang na 396,000. At in 30 years, nakakagastos ka na pala ng 1.188 million sa pagkakape lang. Ngayon, kung gumagastos ka ng 3,300 sa kape per month, sabihin na natin na itinatabi mo yung 3,000 every month. Sa so 4% interest, in 10 years, ang 3,000 mo ay lumaki na to 441,750. And in 30 years naman, yung 3,000 per month mo is lumaki na to 2,082,150. E kung sa 12% natin nilagay, in 10 years, lalaki ito hanggang 743,565. And in 30 years, lumaki ito ng up to 9,766,533. Ngayon, sino nagsabi na maliit na bagay ang 165 pesos per day? Malaki ang nagagawa nito pag naipon natin ng maayos at nailagay sa tamang facility. Ngayon, pag-uusapan naman natin ang preservation of estate. Sabi nga nila, majority of everything is taxable. Sa preservation of estate, ang mga pinakamalaking impact dito ay tinatawag na estate tax. So, ano nga ba ang estate tax? Estate tax is a tax levied on the net value of the estate of a deceased person before distributing to their heirs. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng assets ng isang individual na namatay bago i-transfer sa kanyang pamilya o naiwan na magmamana, ito ay kakaltasan muna ng estate tax. At ang solusyon natin dito ay yung tinatawag naman na tax avoidance. Ang tax avoidance naman is the legal usage of the tax regime to one's own advantage. To reduce the amount of tax that is payable by means that are within the law. To know more about this, we can discuss it sa next class. Importante na matibay ang pundasyon natin at hindi magmukhang ganito. By the looks of it, it's unstable at madaling ma-out of balance. Gusto ba natin na ganito ang mag-itsura ng foundation natin? Siyempre ayaw natin. That's why 
maaga pa lang, dapat unti-unti na natin binibuild tong financial foundation natin. To review, tulad ng sinabi ko sa first video, ito ang tinatawag na solid financial foundation. Importanteng malaman ito dahil pag solid ang financial foundation natin, we can easily go through our financial challenges in life unlike dun sa unstable na foundation na pinakita ko kanina. Unang-una, dapat meron tayong healthcare. Short term and long term dahil sabi nga nila, mahal magkasakit. Kailangan meron tayong sapat na healthcare para hindi maubos yung life savings natin. Next is protection. Like sa X-curve, we need to know how to protect ourselves and our families through proper life insurance. Next naman is eliminating debts. It's okay to have debts in the past, but as we build our foundation, our goal should be crossing out all our debts. Next is having emergency fund. Tulad ng sinabi ko sa previous slides, emergency funds are at least 3 to 6 months of your income or monthly expenses. Lastly, investments. Tulad sa sinabi natin sa X-curve, ang investments ay napakagandang source ng passive income pagdating ng future. If na-build natin siya ng tama early on. Again, pag matibay ang pundasyon natin financially, we can go through our financial challenges in the future. So what's next? Of course, apply what you have learned. All of this would be useless kung hindi tayo magte-take action. And if you want to know more, what you can watch the 13 reasons why become an IMG member. So this is materializing what you have learned or applying na yung mga bagay na pinag-aralan natin kanina. Ano pa? Next would be looking for a mentor or an individual experienced enough who can guide you through your financial journey. Number three, join a community of like-minded individuals whose one goal is to achieve financial success. Thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to comment below the things you've really liked and has most impact on you on this class. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much.